So today's big idea will be YouTube. I'm going to write some notes here. YouTube, yet another social network. Unique selling proposition. The fancy word for, well, what's so unique about it? What's different about it than the others? Focus on video. You can do video on every other network, but this one was one of the big ones that started video. And now it's like the second most popular website in the world. Second or third. Google is number one. Facebook and YouTube are like number two, tied or so. They go back and forth. And it also has like a billion users, a billion members, a billion um, accounts like the big networks. So um, known for two types of videos, pre-recorded and live. So pre-recorded is what we're going to work on today. That is, we upload a video that is complete, that has been worked on, that has been edited, that has been recorded previously. We upload a video that's ready for YouTube. So video. So prepared video, edited, mixed with sound, etc. Text. And live is the opposite. Turn on the live camera, show the world, or your followers. So other networks and apps pioneered live video. Uh, there was Meerkat and Periscope a few years ago. These were apps that you, you download the app, you create an account, you turn it on, and then you show all your followers something live. You talk to them, you show them where you're at in, in, on your vacation, uh, you do a Q&A, etc. And that has become popular. Uh, Facebook then borrowed that idea and Twitter and YouTube. So again, this is the networks all becoming so similar. One has a good idea and they all have the good idea after that. So we're going to focus on pre-recorded in that we are going to edit a video and upload it. It's, it's a complete video. Um, uh, we'll, we'll cover live video concept later. So to create a pre-recorded video, So either uh, record something on your device. So this could be your cell phone, a tablet, a regular camera, you know, a Sony camera, a uh, Panasonic camera, whatever. So you record something with a uh, device and upload it as is. Upload as is. Or the other way is record the video, then edit the video. with software. We have also nowadays some video editing software on our phones. Um, so editing is the process of removing the mistakes or adding music that wasn't there originally or doing interesting transitions you know from one scene or shot to another. So that's editing. Uh, in the real world, like in, in Hollywood movies, it often is rather short the amount of time that a studio or a director spends on the recording part of the movie compared to the editing part. Uh, the Star Wars movies, for example, the classic ones, uh, it took like three years in between each movie. They would record, they would go on location and shoot the footage for maybe like three months but then they spent uh, like three years putting together all the shots and the music and the special effects so editing is often much 
uh, longer than you think and could be comparable or even longer than the actual length of the video. So rule of thumb, one minute of recorded video often needs at least one minute of editing. And we'll see as we work on this because we're going to work on a video that's like less than one minute long and we're going to spend like two or two and a half or three hours editing it. And it's usually not that long uh, to do once you know what you're doing, but uh, how many of you have any video editing experience before? And that's why we need three hours. Mm -hmm. So once you get this practice, then yes, you get closer to one to one. I myself that have been doing this for years, uh, I see, I try to find all the shortcuts. What's the fastest way to do this? For example, keyboard shortcuts. We're going to use the mouse, of course, to click a button and do something and right click and do something. But oftentimes, these video editing software are much more powerful when you know the keyboard shortcuts. When you've got one hand on the keyboard and one hand on the mouse, you're working here, you're clicking the keyboard, and you're doing these shortcuts to quickly cut out the, the mistake, to merge some sounds. And that takes time and effort and practice and memorization of the software. So many tiers. Uh, video editing software, we have basic, intermediate, advanced. So for basic, it's one of the ones we have in class here, Windows Movie Maker for Windows. On the Mac, we have iMovie. Both of them are free. They're still robust enough and powerful, and you can do things, the things that we want to do, like add music, remove mistakes, uh, transitions, special effects, good price, or free. Uh, but then when you want to do some advanced things, it doesn't quite have it. Next level up. There's so many of them in all of these levels, but I'll just mention a few. One that I like is then Adobe Premiere. spell check sorry Adobe Premiere elements advanced is Adobe Premiere other ones um, Final Cut Pro what else um, what's the other one Premiere Final Cut Pro After Effects Vegas So free, not free, expensive. And uh, we have the free one, which we'll be able to do very well with. And this intermediate one, I really recommend it once you, if you do find that video is something you want to do on a regular basis, uh, you're going to get to the limitations of this software eventually. I would recommend intermediate. And that costs about $79 to $99, Premier Elements. Uh, regular price is $99 and I often see it on sale at Costco or Fry's or online for $79 one-time cost this is the one I mostly use nowadays um, I found I find it very powerful and I'll show you examples of client videos a little bit later but um, the higher level ones over here spell premiere a little help here. How do you spell? IER. I -E -R. It is IER. Okay, I should trust myself. So, um, these can be pretty expensive. Thousands of dollars, or tens of hundreds of dollars. Um, but most people really don't need that highest level, and it's very complex. It has still the basic ideas of editing videos and adding sound and text and all that great stuff, but then it has advanced stuff like green screen uh, effects and animated titles and just a lot of complexity. So we'll work with Windows Movie Maker and then with, I would recommend Premiere Elements. It's like the little brother of the big Adobe Premiere.
Let me show you a quick, a few quick examples of videos. As I said, I yes. When would you need a Premiere as opposed to Elements? It really is going to be if you want to do really advanced things, like let's say you've got stuff moving on screen and you want something to follow what's moving on screen. Like you want to animate something moving in the screen on top of what's already there. Um, but in terms of a profession, um, would you be in like the movie industry or, or uh, weddings or compared to Ellen? You know, yeah, if you're, if you're in the industry that your product that you're creating is video, most likely you would want Premiere because it gives you the most power. Uh, a lot of people start off with elements to get their to get their footing and then move on to to the full premiere. So let me just show a couple of quick examples here. As I said, I um, I teach this stuff, but I also am part of a business that we do this for clients. So here's a couple of little commercials we did for some local um, uh, local businesses. Here's one of uh, of an Italian food restaurant in, on Third Avenue in Chula Vista. So 38 seconds, it has various shots of the food, there's some movement, things are out of focus, the chef is uh, making that dish, there's uh, music that fits the mood, and then at the end, the, um, the website of the business. So this is one possible way or reason to use uh, video to use YouTube commercials. You, of course, have seen commercials on TV uh, all your life, and YouTube is uh, nowadays almost like another channel on TV. People watch stuff on YouTube all day long, and you can create your own videos, your own commercials for your business like this, and upload them all for free. Like the other networks, there is a um, a paid aspect of things as well. You could pay to get more views. Well, just because you get those views, what else are you doing with them? Do you have your business phone number in the video? Do you have the address? Do you have the website? So like all the other networks, yeah, you can pay to boost your tweet and boost your post on Facebook and your pin and your video. But again, you have to create something that will then get you a result. So what we've talked about previously also applies. But this one just has the website, so shouldn't it have the address or contact information? Well, the contact information is also on uh, the, the channel of the business. So it could be on the video, on the channel, but in any way to get out the word of the, of the business. It depends on the business. Um, their goal here was that they wanted to give out uh, attention to to their website specifically. So they want people to come to the website in this case because the the menu is on the website, the full menu. Uh, so there's no wrong answer, but this is what they wanted to do. And yeah, if you want to put the number, the address, and all of that, that works as well. I guess almost everybody goes to but if they don't know what the website is, and look at how terrible that, uh, not terrible, but look at how long that website address is and hard to remember. So putting it on the uh, video then to remind them, here's our website. Yes. 
Did you purchase the music or did you use that's something that we'll, that we'll be talking about, that yes, music is a big deal that people ask. Can I get the music out of my music library and use it? Short answer, no. Uh, we will talk about using uh, royalty-free, copyright-free music. That's the best way to do it. Uh, yes? Um, is that a clickable link? YouTube used to give us the ability to make some items clickable on the video. They've been changing it, and I think they've removed that. So it's not clickable at the moment, and also you would have to verify your links, so they kind of made it less useful, unfortunately. Uh, they've changed some things, take away other things, added other things, so it may be clickable, but I think they've take, taken away that uh, ability. How about the, the, uh, the down here, it is it is clickable, definitely, see right there. So it's got whatever we write here in the description that we will see that those can be clickable. Another question? So um, with the lighting, with the cameras, with the angles, with the, with the time, like how long did that take you guys? Um, and then... Short answer is a long time. From your team. The, the, we had a really big crew of myself on this. That's a joke. I was the o I was the only one. So uh, I was the one that set up the cameras and the light, and then did all the editing. I'm the one that focuses on video in in the business. Uh, that's why it took a while because I'm the only one that knows how to do it in the business, and it took a while. But more people that you have and that they know what they're doing, it can go a lot faster. Setting up the cameras and the lights, and then actually editing it all. So edit. Uh, so doing the recording on on site. Um, you know, took less than less than two hours maximum, because it was about the chefs doing what they do, and then us setting up in different angles. Okay, you're gonna cook this. Let's stand over here. Let's wait. Okay, now ready. Start to pour it in, and all of that. So that didn't take that long to record. The editing is then what took a while. The editing took definitely more than two hours. You know, something like let's say, because uh, we made more than one. So let's say eight hours uh, maximum. But uh, like I said, it, it just takes so much longer to do the editing than the actual recording. Here's another one for the same client. So same sort of idea. Do you see both of the videos have that same sort of idea <clears throat> in that it's close-ups of the preparation and then one final shot at the end where the camera moves in and uh, things in focus and not in focus and all of that. So they, ha they both have this particular style right in the kitchen and then plating it and so forth and then music. So when creating these videos, this is the hard part to teach. I can show you the software and you can understand it relatively quickly. The parts that are very hard to teach, however, that's why they have, you know, uh, a bunch of classes on video editing. <clears throat> they have certificates. They have majors. You can get a college degree in video editing and, and all of this in, in, in cinema. So the hard part to teach is, you know, what is the idea of the video? And I'll have a handout for you uh, later with some possible starting points of ideas of videos you know what's the idea is it going to be like a simple commercial is it going to be an interview type of video a how-to video I'll give you examples of kinds of videos later but then is there a style what is the style of the video I can give you a list of styles of videos as well but if it doesn't apply to your business it doesn't behoove you very much to then try to understand that style I guess it's better to look again competition what is the competition doing uh, let me go look up videos of other lawyers how do their videos look well I can do that better or I can do that equally or I can try to do that 
Um, what will it look like? What will it sound like? So a video is visuals and audio, usually. Something to look at and something to listen to. It's almost so obvious and basic, don't need to say it. But I do, because you need to be in charge of both of these. In a real movie, <clears throat> a real Hollywood movie, there is a whole crew all about just the cameras and a whole crew all just about the sounds. The people that hold the microphones and record it all uh, versus the people that hold the cameras and record it and then synchronize it and all of that. So what will it look like? We saw the style of these two videos, close-ups, um, out of focus, whatever, for artistic purposes. And uh, sound, there was, no, there was no people talking at all. It was just the soundtrack throughout the whole time. So these are the artistic things that I can't really teach, but you sort of um, learn by practice or seeing, getting inspiration. Did you have to go through a lot to, in terms of, pick, you know, honing in on a song or, you know, a tune? Did you have to listen to like 30 of them and go, okay, I like that's because of the energy? Yeah. The I don't remember how long it took for that one. It was a few years ago, but definitely that's a part of it that takes a while too, figuring out the right, the right sound. Part of the way to figure that out, there's pre-production, production, post-production. Post so this is basically planning. This is recording. And this is editing. Planning. Uh, there, there's a couple, two big ways uh, in this pre-production. I think they're both viable, but I think it, it, it takes a certain person to do either or. Planning in pre-production here either uh, set up the idea before idea beforehand or not. So with that video of Italianissimo, that restaurant, I didn't have a plan. I went there with my other business partner and, and she helped out a bit, but I, I did most of it. We, we went on to the location, to the restaurant. We didn't quite have an idea. We said, okay, chefs, cook stuff, we'll record, we'll figure out what kind of video we'll put together afterward. So that was the not having a plan. I think it came out fine. I think those two videos were fun and they got the point across, but they didn't have a plan. Um, other people work better in that I'm going to write a script. I'm going to make storyboards, which is to make drawings of what you're going to do. And I want to record a shot where the camera is looking at here, and I want a shot that the camera is doing here. That's the, uh, that's the, the method of planning it. And usually on big Hollywood movies, they definitely do that. They, they figure out the mm -hmm. whole script, of course. They figure out the shots. They plan, okay, today it's going to be sunny. We're going to go on this location. We're going to do this and that. And they better because they're wasting millions of dollars if they, if they don't do it right. But for us, regular people, you may get a good result if you don't plan it. You go record and then after you put together. I personally kind of like that. I'm going to record a bunch of things. Uh, I'm going to let the creative juices flow and I'm going to put together something out of what I've recorded. Yeah, it could be a challenge like, oh, I wish I would have recorded that for two more seconds. But I kind of like that challenge of working with this is what we got. This is what, re what we recorded. Let's make something artistic out of it. But I think for a lot of people it would be better. Let's plan a little bit of what I want to record. I definitely want to get the chef standing over here and then I want to get the business owner talking about this. So that's the pre-production. Some amount of planning. The recording then is on location, record. On this uh, production, uh, one way is again, your cell phone is probably a pretty good video camera. If you have one of like, you know, a phone within the last year, even the last two, three years, you probably have a very good camera here. So, um, those video, those two videos there were shot with 
uh, with a with those Canon DSLR cameras, you know, the bigger ones with interchangeable lenses and such. I like those, they give you more control, but these, they're getting so much better now. This one records in 4K, you know, the highest video quality at the moment, uh, and uh, very good sound and all of that. So, yes? Uh, what is, like, the price range that It's such a huge range. We just uh, got uh, a client for some video recently. Uh, what did we charge them? Um, I think we were going to do one video, uh, I think, for $250, $250. It really ranges, you know, we were kind of giving them the friend discount a little bit, but that can easily be, you know, 100 to 500 per video, a really big range, but that particular person, we gave them that price. It's a little bit perhaps on the low end, but it really ranges. So with production and recording on location, you have to decide, are you recording audio? and video at once or separate. The, these can obviously record the video and the sound at the same time. But do you ever notice, uh, like on uh, news broadcasts, the reporter has a microphone. So they're speaking directly into the microphone to capture their voice and then a camera is recording the video, then those are two synchronized. Maybe you might have also seen on other broadcasts, they have a little thing clipped to their shirt. It's a little mini lapel microphone clipped to the shirt. Because the problem with using even a high-end, even that high-end uh, Canon camera and such, the problem always happens with audio. They can record video really well, but audio is always a problem simply because of the laws of physics. If I have an amazing camera and I'm standing over here, and I'm trying to record Edgar over here, giving him his interview, the, the, the volume is gonna be terrible. He has to speak up really, really loud. And even then, it probably still won't carry to the, micro, uh, to the microphone built in here. So if I really needed to record someone that far away, I would have to have some other way to record their voice. Maybe a little microphone on their shirt, or having another microphone recorder on his desk right there while I'm over here. And then in the video editing stage, uh, post-production, I have to synchronize both. Have you ever seen in uh, movies or documentaries and such, they're gonna record something for a movie. Someone walks in with this, with this square thing that claps. That black and white, it's, a, it's called a clapper board. That thing that someone walks in, they clap it like that, and then they start recording. Well, the purpose of that is for sound synchronization. That big clap like that is a, is a point that you can use to anchor the audio track with the video track so that it's not unsynchronized and the, vo and the mouth is moving but the voice isn't coming out. So that clapper board, they clap it when they start to record so that the audio people can record the video people stuff, I mean, synchronize it together. So that's the challenge of, of doing this. Are you recording audio and video separately? Separately is going to give you better results if you know what you're doing. But it is more complex in that you've got to then synchronize the sound um, or else people's mouths are going to move and their voice is going to come out wrong. <clears throat> and then editing using the software to fix mistakes add animation, fix color, add text, etc. That's what we'll focus on today. Let me show another example here. This is, a, this is just a fun one. Well, let me show this other one first. Uh, here's one, one of ours that, um, from, from our company that has gotten a lot of views. Um, well, this one first. Are there any uh, small external microphones that hook up to 
iPhones, cell phones. Yeah, I'll, I'll mention hardware in a moment. It does start off with very low sound, just one moment. do some commentary takes a moment so uh, this one was uh, for International Women's Day 2017 the Seroptimist flash mob at the beginning there was uh, you know shots of the of the restaurant where it was gonna happen you see it went from one shot to another there's a fade between them setting the stage about you know here's the place people are enjoying an afternoon and such and then the point of it was have you heard of a, a flash mob a flash mob is that suddenly people gather together and do something to catch attention for something so this group of ladies here had planned that at a certain point then the, the music would come on and they would dance and they were just trying to build awareness for International Women's Day and so they danced and then that went on for a little while and they did the piece and you saw one shot, another shot, the camera switches between different different angles. Music, synchronized to the music. So uh, that one, uh, regarding the question earlier about music, yes, this one does have copyrighted music that is that is uh, that is unlicensed. Uh, so uh, making a note here, it'll matter much more a little bit later regarding music, regarding a soundtrack. Don't use copyrighted music. This example breaks that rule, but listen to this rule instead. Um, don't use music that you don't own. Uh, just because you bought that CD or you bought that sound from iTunes or whatever, you can't, you cannot, and you should not use it in your video projects. You only paid, technically, to listen to the sound. You didn't pay, you didn't license it to use it for any project. This was a special case because it's a nonprofit organization, etc. But it's worse when what if I had put that song on that video for that restaurant? The purpose of that restaurant is to sell food. It's a commercial purpose. So then I'm using a song that I hadn't licensed for a commercial purpose, and it's even worse. The thing with this is this is where people get into trouble. This is where people get lawyer, uh, letters from lawyers saying you violated copyrights. This is where you get your YouTube channel shut down mm -hmm. because copyrighted music violations is a thing that is so easy to do that, that can be avoided. The thing is you don't want to use any copyrighted music. Yes? What if you play your own version of the song? It depends. On the copyright holder, and YouTube will, will tell you and guide you which is okay and which is not. If you play your own version, uh, it may be okay to use, it may not. It depends on the artist, it depends on the contracts that they have with YouTube and all of that. So it's often better to err on the side of caution of not using any of this copyrighted music. Instead, use royalty free public domain. Creative Commons music, 
which is free music. YouTube has a library of thousands of such songs. It doesn't have the big famous songs that we all want to use. But the reason those big famous songs are in movies and such is because they paid millions of dollars to use that music. We don't have millions. We don't have thousands of dollars to pay for a song. We have YouTube, which gives us for free thousands of songs in the style of rock or pop or jazz or classical music etc. And I'll show you where to get that when we log into YouTube next week. But YouTube gives us thousands of songs that are okay for us to use for any of our projects, free or commercial purposes. That business over there, the Italian food restaurant, that's music that fits in this, that is from this, that it's okay that I'm using it on my video that I'm trying to sell something, I'm using music that's okay for that purpose. Yes? What if in four minutes video if I use uh, 10 songs, different songs, in the performance video, is it okay? Or is it still copyrighted? It's technically still copyrighted, but the, the, the thing is that, yes, it's, um, again, it's better to be cautious than, than make a mistake. Because I have seen and I have read that if it's like less than 10 seconds long, you might be okay. I would rather definitely be okay than probably okay. So I, for testing it for myself on my own personal channels, I have made videos where it's just like 10 seconds uh, of uh, popular songs. And when, when there is a copyright violation, YouTube tells you. And it puts, it puts a little scary icon on your video that says copyright violation. But when I've tested it with short videos, with short sounds that short, I haven't seen that. So you might be okay by using very short excerpts, less than 10 seconds, but that's so short it's, it's, it's almost meaningless on a real video. So again, I would be much more safer. Introduction. What's that? You can make your introduction with music then, 10 seconds. If you're making a series of videos. Uh, I'm not sure I understand the question. You can't make... Okay, for example, uh, the cake of the day with... Victor's Bakery, mm -hmm. you know, so you can put this and then you can put the cake of the day, how to do it, and the next day, cake of the day with Victor ba the Victor's Bakery, you mm -hmm. know, like the introduction. The oh, sure, sure, okay, like introduction music in the beginning. Yeah, in the beginning. Possibly, possibly, but I, I like to, in all of these classes, tell students really be the safe, as safe as you can. You know, in the, in, the, in the photo classes that I'm involved in, people ask, well, can I use that famous photo? Probably not. And they say, well, what if I, what if I change it? And I say, probably, maybe. And they say, well, what, I've heard that if you change a photo, 25%. Well, what's 25% on a video, on a photo? Is that changing the person's shirt? Is that changing text? Like, who knows? It's better just to be on the side of caution and use what is definitely safe instead of what could possibly be safe. Yes? Historically, how have you charged people? Like, do you take into account the music, editing time? Um, what goes into your number? Uh, it could be uh, like an hourly, an hourly rate or per project. Per project, anyway, is a variation of hourly. But because let's say if we're charging sixty-five to one hundred dollars an hour, then we figure out okay, if this is going to take about two hours, you know, there's a two hundred dollars. If we have an idea of a kind of video that we can create quickly that will be good for their uh, purposes, then that could be where the two hundred or three hundred dollars is. You know, hourly sixty-five to one hundred dollars an hour or so. Uh, these are the videos that we've done in our channel. This one's got one hundred thirty-seven thousand views. It became very popular, and the follow-up video was this one of twelve thousand views. So uh, these have views and likes, just like any sort of other social networks. Some of them may go viral, some of them not. And this is a funny thing. When we work with video or any content, it's just so funny how on some project we work very hard and plan it and upload it, and this is going to be great. And then it doesn't get that many views. And then other videos that maybe aren't as polished and such, and suddenly those are the ones that go viral. You, you never know. So um, just briefly looking at this one. This one is a tutorial video. 
Not that one, that's a commercial. Hello, this is Victor Campos for PMD Interactive. Let's learn how to set up Visual Studio 2017 for creating Android apps. So first thing I want to do is go to visualstudio.com and download the installer. When I get to visualstudio.com, I have various options. All right, so this is a 16 minute long video that teaches something showing you how to download the software, how to set it up, how to start making apps. Um, and it's me narrating and showing the screen and the process and saying click on this and do that. And then eventually you get, you know, you get some sort of app. So this one is different in that it's my screen being recorded, but I don't have like a camera pointed at my screen. You never want to do that, that'll look terrible. You want to use software that records your screen. So slightly off topic, if you want to create videos that record your screen, one software that I would use for that is called Open Broadcaster Software, OBS. It is for Windows and Mac. It's over at obsproject.com. And what that lets you do is record your computer screen. And there's plenty of software that will let you do that. This is only one of them. This is the one I like. This is the one that I use in these classes to record these lectures. I have a microphone plugged in, and it records my screen and my voice. And that's what I upload when you replay the videos. So that one that I was showing a moment ago about how to make that app, that's what I used. It recorded my voice as I moved on the screen and then in in Premiere then I added the soundtrack in the back and the fade in and the fade out and the branding and, I, and everything completely free software very powerful I really recommend it that's another kind of video that you could create so there I am right there showing the first time simply for Visual Studio to recognize your device and then the same but again, the process go. Oh, there's that. And here it is. There's that same web project that loaded up a moment ago, and now it's on my device. Device is ready. I can still all. Okay, so that's advanced right there. I'm recording the uh, screen, and then I pop up in the corner. Well, that's having a different video input and more complexity and such, and then it was in the middle, then it moved to the side, and, and all of that. So you can get pretty creative with these. And if you noticed, see that little black thing on my shirt? That's that little lapel microphone that I have on my shirt to record my voice while the camera is off over here so that my voice sounds good. Because even these best even these best devices when you're getting like further than arm's length it's already gonna lose quality simply for the fact of physics because sound waves travel and they have to be captured and even this far away from my microphone to the person is already gonna lose voice quality so that's why having a lapel microphone like that is right by your mouth and that's gonna record your voice but then you have to synchronize it and do all of that extra effort Well, that one, uh, the, w the way that one was set up was with, I believe, with a web camera, so like one of these web cameras, and then the microphone uh, is plug was plugged into the computer, and the computer was recording the sound. But if you want one of those kinds of microphones on your, for your phone, usually those lapel microphones nowadays come with the adapter. And if you still have, well, it depends on your phone. If you have the classic headphone jack on your on your phone, you just plug it in there. If you have, uh, like, a newer iPhone, you that those adapters, you need that extra thirty dollar adapter to then plug into the microphone. One last one, then we'll take a break. Then we will start ourselves. So on my one of my personal fun channels, completely off topic. One of my hobbies is comic books and comic collecting and all of that. I've got over here a video that I think is pretty fun from the recent Comic-Con. So last year, San Diego Comic-Con, I made this uh, music video.
That one was the Canon camera. What's that? Did you purchase the music also? Nope, this is that free music from YouTube. Oh, okay. okay. So, um, that's what I usually try to do, use the free YouTube music, and there's so many styles. So that was uh, with uh, a DSLR, a Canon camera with interchangeable lenses. Uh, the people use that kind of camera just because you can get the most um, control. You know, with our phone cameras here, it, they're very good, but they're limited to a certain wide angle or close up or that sort of thing. With that kind of camera, you can put in a certain lens for a certain purpose and all of that. And uh, so then audio synchronized, visuals, uh, and that's, that's a taste of what San Diego Comic Con is like. This is, um, you know, just for fun, for practice. I have these client videos, but then I want to continue to improve my skills for clients. So I do this fun stuff on the side regarding video. Because you get better at video the more you make videos. And simply just putting your turning on your camera like that and talking, that could be a kind of a video, but the ones that get often more attention and exposure and go viral are the ones that are more interesting looking or sounding or funny and and all of that. So I could show more examples next time, but what we'll do is let's set ourselves up about how we're gonna work with a video. We'll take our break and then we'll start to do a little video editing. In the network folder, I have for you a video example project. So let's do this. Go to a computer window um, into the network folder, classroom data drive Z. We'll go to our class, it's on the top here, classroom data 2017. Yes? I'm questioning about the video. Wouldn't it make sense to put your contact information at the end for your video? Doing business, then you, um, on which particular one? The one you just showed us at Comic Con. Um, I don't need. I'm not putting that one out to like get hired from it. I'm putting it out just for fun. Just for fun and practice. Yeah. But what, you could have used it to draw more attention to your business. No, because uh, that is too much of a fun, silly, unprofessional video oh. to be connecting <laughs> it with our business. Then inside of our folder here, social two. Copy this whole folder, video example. So just drag that whole folder to your desktop. Copy it to your desktop or flash drive. You want a copy of this whole video, video example, which has a video file and a sound file. So I've got a copy. You should get a copy. If you're having trouble finding it, let me know. You want a copy of that video folder onto your desktop. Inside of it, there's a file, airport lounge, sound file, and video file. Now, these computers don't have sound, so you won't be able to hear it unless you plug in headphones. And if you don't have headphones, that's OK. You'll still be able to do this. But we have the volume off on these on purpose on your computers because obviously one person turns their volume up and then another person turns their volume up because they can't hear their volume. So we have all the volume off. Uh, if you want to hear anything, you need to plug in headphones. Once you've got a copy of that video, let's go to the Start menu and uh, the Windows Start menu here and start searching Movie. MOV Movie and you should see the, the program Movie Maker.
start searching movie and you'll see movie maker you'll get then Windows Movie Maker there's a bunch of icons and windows to work with and such for the moment let's uh, click on the top left corner uh, this little disk icon to save the project so all the way on the top left corner that uh, floppy disk icon save and we're gonna save this project to that folder on your desktop the video example project folder and you can call it my video project well did you start Windows Movie Maker once you start Windows Movie Maker then you can click on that save icon on the top left and then in the folder of the video project of the video example we're just going to save this as my video so let's take our first well let's do one more thing then we'll take our break this project is empty there's no video yet do you see there's a button here that says click here to browse for video and photos we want to add the video file that I gave you to our project so click that button where it says click here and then in the project folder video example you're gonna select the video so video.mp4 going to bring in the video for us to then edit. Once it copies in like that, you can click save and then we'll take our break. It's 10.30ish. We'll take a break until 10.40 and then we'll um, We'll see about editing.